contracted by a fellow yoga practitioner recovering from COVID-19. So her lungs have been inflamed and they're painful. And in that condition, we've been advised by doctors not to lie on our backs. And she wanted to follow one of my pranayama classes. So we had to invert the Sakura Shavasan so that we are lying on our front so that in the breathingness, the back lungs had full freedom and could really get that pranic infusion, that oxygen, and receive that healing. So this class is for any of you who are in that same situation, or who just want to make this experience and know what it's like to invert a Shavasana and invert a pranayamic supine pose and experience the inner body and the breath from a different place, that inner topography. So we're gonna need some blankets to make sure that the body can rest and be comfortable, free of strain. And let's gather all of that stuff and come back to our mats. All right, so I've got three blankets, could end up being four, but for now I'm thinking three is gonna be fine. One of these, we're going to roll it up like a mini bolster. And this is going to go underneath our shins and our front ankles. So at the end of the mat where you envisage your feet being. And then we're taking another one. And we're also making a little bolster. And if you get into the pose and you realize that something's uncomfortable, you can decrease by unrolling or increase if you have rolled all the way so you get more height. You kind of have to sense the vehicle that you're in and what's going to be better for you. It's going to be a little bit different for everybody. The general idea is these tubes, these mini bolsters, and then you can adjust the size as needed. Okay, this is going to go at the front of the mat for the forehead. Okay, so we're going to lie down on the front body. This blanket underneath the front ankles or the shins. We're lying down and adjusting this so it's underneath the pubic bone, the lower abdomen. Now if something already feels straining, you can build height underneath the shins, move the bolster underneath the abdomen, find that sweet spot where it just makes sense. And as we come down, first of all, forearms on the mat. And we're pressing into our elbows and our forearms to pull the front rib cage forward. And we should feel a stretch in the abdominal cavity. And that indicates that we're starting to access through the pushiness of the elbows, how to bring the sternum forward, the ribs forward to create more space in the abdominal area for our inner organs. So just feeling that, pulling into that a little bit. And when you feel that you've reached your maximum capacity of openness right now, go ahead and come down without closing that space. So you can use the mat and the rib cages connecting with the mat to climb forward a little bit before you place yourselves. And now this blanket is going to support the forehead and you want it high enough that your nose is not squishing into the ground. So again, everyone's cervical spine is a little bit different. So you may have to take more height, less height. You're going to judge it for you. The sides of the neck want to be long and even. So make sure that you're not having the blanket too close to the shoulders. If you can get more length, pull it forward a little bit and follow that with the forehead and feel the cervical spine lengthen. And now reaching the arms above you, bending the elbows and holding onto the elbows with your fingertips. And now with your right hand, lift your left elbow up, move the inner elbow forward. You're going to feel a lovely stretch in the armpit. And then do the same with the other side. Now move the trapezius muscles down the back. And reposition the forehead so that the skin of the forehead is moving down towards the nose. 
You don't want the skin of your forehead to be pulled up towards the scalp line because this is going to immediately shorten the back of the neck. So really staying conscious of how that forehead is connecting to the edge of the blankets. Okay, now just rolling the thighs in and bringing the knees a little bit closer together so that the buttocks can widen, so that the back hips can be broad, the lower back can be broad, no strain felt there. Adjust the feet if you feel like you need to, to just be completely even and comfortable. Pull the elbow tips forward one more time. And we're going to come for a few cycles into Ujjayi one breath, where we're evening out the inhalation with the exhalation. So you want to have an internal timer going on in your head. And within all the different sensations you're feeling, you're counting in the background the length of the inhale and matching that with the length of the exhale until you have a completely even, symmetrical and effortless flow between inhalation and exhalation. So here we go, starting with the exhale. Counting the inhale. Matching it with the exhale. Matching it with the inhale. And with the exhale. And we're going to be here for one minute, just really keeping our attention on the evenness of the breath. Keep relaxing the jaw, relaxing the tongue. And keep moving the trapezius muscles down the back so that there's never a hunchingness in the neck. Okay. So hopefully you're feeling this opening here in the tricep, the armpit area, which is so linked to the pranayamic gills. And in this position particularly, we can really access that sensation. We're now going to change the butt of our arms, adjust anything that wasn't feeling quite right. With the fingertips, re-pull the inner elbows forward, move the trapezius muscles down the back, and rest the forehead back on the blanket. Coming back to Ujjayi one breath, just really getting that rhythm established that brings us into the parasympathetic nervous system and sets the right space for deep healing. Releasing the elbow tips and bringing the arms back, supporting the chin with the hands. Mm, just relaxing, easing out any strain or effort that had come into the pose. And then coming back up. Okay, we're now going to build up a little bit more potential for expansion in the back lungs 
by adding a little height to this bolster. So we can just take this and roll it in another blanket. Okay, and as we lie down, I'm going to place this on the pubic bone, front abdomen, and it's going to push in and really connect the gut, the organs to the lower back. And from there, that will be the foundation of as we inhale, we're going to fill light water in a jug. The breath starts here, and as we inhale, it fills up, broadening, 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 until we can't fill anymore. We're going to hold the breath for a few seconds, really maximizing that pranic infusion. And then as we exhale down, we want to try to keep that broadness in the back lungs, in the back body. So it's making you like a triangle shape like this, broadening as we inhale, filling, keeping the broadness as we exhale. Okay, so here we go. We're also going to change the arms just a little bit. So back into our position. But this time, the bolster is a little bit above the pubic bone, more on the abdominal area. That's it, getting comfortable. <clears throat> Pulling ourselves forward to lengthen that front body before coming down. And we can just have the arms to the side here. Settling back into our jai one breath, making sure the knees are coming in towards each other so the lower back and the hips are broad. Okay, we're going to enter into prolonged inhalations with a retention at the top, a normal exhalation, and then three normal Ujjayi one cycles, even inhales and exhales before starting again. So here we go, keeping the face soft, the shoulders moving away from the ears, exhale, and begin. Long, drawn out inhalation. Broadening the back body, filling it open. Holding that, allowing it to infuse deep. And keeping that broadness as we exhale. Ujjayi one breath. Relax the shoulders, relax the effort. And exhaling to begin again. Long, drawn out inhalation. Feeling the shape of that triangle that we're making from inside with the breath. Holding that with retention. And holding that expansion as we exhale. Ujjayi one breath. Relax the jaw, the tongue, the cheeks. And when you're ready, starting again, we're going to do three more cycles of prolonged inhalations, retention, exhale, and Ujjayi one breath. Here we go. Don't take the tension in the neck. Keep relaxing the neck, relaxing the face. Expanding into those lungs, broadening. Last cycle coming up. Mm. 
Ujjayi one breath. Merging. And coming out. All right, we're going to continue with the pranayamic work in Situ Bhagasavangasan using a block under the tailbone so the back ribs and the back lungs are free, they're not compressed or pressing anything. And they're learning to press upwards, it's a different type of stimulation, pressing upwards, getting active again, getting sensitive right to the tiniest little tips of our bronchioles and bringing that breath in and life force in. So we need to actually just have the floor, no mat, so that we can slide back and forth as needed. So let's just roll this up and of course you'll need a block and if you have a slightly fragile lower back, you might need two blocks, one under the heels and one under the tailbone, just to take any over effort out of the lower back, if that's your tendency, and a strap. So I'm gonna demo with two blocks, in case there are some of you um, who are needing that today. Okay, so straps, little loop, Feet through the straps and tightening up. This is just helping the outer thighs to be reminded to suck in so that the arch bypasses the lumbar, which becomes firm, and comes to the middle back of the thoracic spine and the dorsal spine. Learning to press that in, re engage. Okay, if you're using the second block, it's coming here. You have two heights. You could go highest or down to here. And here we go. Lifting the hips up. Blocks under the tailbone, so that means lower down between the crack of the buttocks. Roll the shoulders back. And now just touching your back ribs with your hands and encouraging them to press up, reactivizing them. And then stretching the arms straight, interlocking the fingers and rolling each front shoulder back. So see how beautifully open the sides of the ribs are, the ribs that are underneath the armpit chest. These are such important ribs for breathing. As we inhale now, we're going to do interrupted inhalations, which means we're going to inhale and pause, inhale and pause, inhale and pause, until we fill the entire trunk with the inhalation. And I want you to think of broadening these side ribs, so increasing that triangulation that we were looking at in the last pose. Broadening, 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 broadening. As we exhale, we keep that broadness, and then we find a jai breath for a few cycles. Getting that evenness, relaxing again, and starting again with our interrupted inhalations. Okay, so preparing, exhale, and begin. Sip the breath in, and pause. Sip the breath in, and pause. Sip the breath in, broaden, widen, and hold and continue until it's not possible to take in any more breath. Broaden those side ribs and then keep that broadness as you exhale, allowing the belly button to move towards the lower back. And then normal breath cycles. Evening it out, relaxing the throat, relaxing the brain. Okay, three more cycles like this. So exhale, and here we go, interrupted inhalations. And 
abdomen, exhale without losing any of that broadness, keep that inner shape. Ujjayi one breath, even inhales and even exhales. Beginning our second one, our third one actually, the second one of the final ones. Here we go, interrupted inhalations. Keep pressing the arms down, pressing the back ribs up, broadening the ribs underneath the armpit. And keeping all of that broadness as you softly exhale with awareness. Ujjayi one breath. Keep softening the eyeballs. And the third and last and final cycle here, exhale. And begin to sit the breath in and then hold. And again, sipping more breath in, and then hold. And again. And again. Gently exhaling. Resuming with even breath cycle. All right, we're going to change the interlock of the fingers and do the other side. But before we do that, we're going to bring our heels onto the blocks or onto the floor. And we're going to push ourselves back. So now you can see why you didn't want a mat. So that you can slide and find the distance that's right for you. So that the legs are straight, the feet are pressing into the wall, the heels are pressing down into the floor or the block. The legs are vibrant. The front thighs are pressing down. The tailbone, of course, is pressing up, and so is the middle buttock. So it's not just hanging on the block. The middle buttock is being pressed up to the sky. And from there, we re-roll the shoulders back, changing the interlock of the fingers, lengthening the back of the neck, and pressing those back ribs in to find that broadness in the side lungs underneath the ribs of the armpits. Resuming with our interrupted inhalation. So exhale and begin. Keep pressing the arms down and pressing the shoulder blades up. Holding that imprint gently, exhaling. And then some normal, even breath cycles. And beginning again, exhaling. Inhaling, pause. Inhale, pause. Inhale, pause. Press the arms down, press the shoulder blades up. Inhale, pause. And exhale. Back to Ujjayi one breath. Relaxing the throat. Relaxing the face. And preparing for our second to last cycle. Sipping the breath in, pausing, sipping the breath in, pausing, and so forth. Getting that broadness in the side ribs.
Ujjayi one breath between cycles to calm the system down. And our last cycle of interrupted inhalations, expanding into that triangle. Here we go. strap will slide off as we straighten our legs. Widen the feet so they're the width of the yoga mat and turning the heels out and the toes in. And lifting the inner arches. If it's hard to reach the floor, you can have your fingertips on blocks. Dropping the head right down. And lifting the trapezius muscles right here up. So the head is hanging, but the trapezius muscles are lifting. And you can feel the cells and the upper back starting to reignite. Ujjayi one breath. Filling the back ribs. Broadening and expanding. Keep relaxing the neck, relaxing the head. And then releasing. And then we release it to the floor. Okay, now we're going to combine those two breaths together. So we did inhalation retention, and then we did Inhalation, pause, inhalation, pause, inhalation, pause. So we're going to do inhalation, pause, inhalation, pause, inhalation, filling the jug with this triangulation. And right when we can't inhale anymore, we're going to retain the breath with that shape that's being made from inside. And then we're going to exhale, keeping that shape. Have three normal breath cycles, normal meaning ujjayi, one, even, regulated and then start again. And we're going to do this in Yoga Mudrasana Vajrasana. So let's take our mats back out. And let's see. Take the bigger bolster that you've made, it's underneath the abdomen, and that is going to support the length of the front spine. One blanket for the forehead so the neck, I mean, sorry, so the nose doesn't get squished and so that the neck stays long. And let's see, we can just have that on the side in case we want to make this bolster bigger. In fact, I'm already feeling like we want to make this bolster bigger, so let's just fold that up. Really have good support and have a layer on top. Okay. Thinking that as the front body is supported, it can move towards the back body and that breath can take shape in a slightly different way, really maximizing the penetration of the back lungs. So we're coming in, 
I'm moving this blanket forward enough, building it up if needed, so that it's really going to support our foreheads when we lower our heads down. The arms in front, holding onto the elbows and moving with our fingertips, the elbow tips forward so that we're gaining length in the armpit area. Finding Jai in one breath, so evening out again. And then starting with our breath combination of interrupted inhalations, finished with a retention at the very top, that absolute broadness, and holding that as we exhale and resume Ujjayi one breath for three cycles before entering again the work of that sipping inhalation with retention. So here we go. Keep checking that your face isn't taking on the effort, that your neck and throat aren't taking on the effort. And going back in, interrupted inhalations. And when you can't take any more breath in, holding that, retaining that to your absolute maximized broadness from inside the body, and then back to Ujjayi breath. Changing the cross of the elbows. Moving again, the elbow sits forward. And when we're ready, forehead down. We'll be doing the same work. Interrupted inhalations. Maximizing that back broadness. Really visualizing the prana itself going into the deepest, darkest recesses of the lungs. Holding that in retention. And then exhaling without dropping any of that, three normal breath cycles, and then back to the sipping, interrupted inhalations and retention. Beginning with the exhale, and we begin. Slow, soft, smooth sips of the inhalation. With regular pauses. Feeling the back broaden, the back lungs broaden. Holding that, settling in that broadness, and then exhaling. Ujjayi one breath. Exhaling and beginning again. Sipping the inhale in, pausing. Re-sipping, broadening, pausing, and again, and again, imprinting that broadness in, and exhale, Ujjayi one breath. Exhaling, and our last cycle, sip the inhale in, and pause. 
and again broadening the side ribs and pause and again and again retaining the breath broadening the lung capacity and then exhale releasing keeping that broadness Jai one breath and then releasing the elbows and slowly gently emerging. Just allow yourselves to settle in the newness of these experiences. And now we're just gonna rest in Shavasana, on our abdomens, no more breath effort, just resting, receiving, and letting all of our work settle into the cells and do the work that it does best without our mind interfering and just open to that. So back to our first setup, where we had a little roll underneath the front ankles. Let's just move that aside. One small roll under the pubic bone area. The knees together, the feet apart, which helps our thighs to roll in and our sit bones to stay wide. Moving ourselves forward so the front abdomen stays long. And then adjusting as needed. Arms to the side or wherever is most comfortable for you. And entering Shavasa. Just inviting every cell in the body to relax and melt into the earth.
arms back so that we can gently push ourselves out. And coming to kneel on the mat. Collarbones long, side ribs, side lungs, broadly breathing, closing the eyes, feeling our breath, observing our breath. Does it feel different? And then gently opening the eyes. So hopefully that was an interesting experience for you and if you are recovering from lung congestion, including the possible complications of COVID-19 and you're a yogi and you have the equipment, hopefully you'll let me know how this worked for you. I'd obviously be grateful to learn from your experience. In the meantime, take good care. Our practice is complete. Namaste.